just got to say something to your proud day. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> everybody. I survived Birvana and the week that is Choice Beer Week. So now we start rolling into some normal beer related things. So now that all the good beer tasting has been finished with, um, this Sunday I have my bad beer tasting course. So this is the sensory training course that I'm running for the Hut Brewer Group, uh, Hut Brewer Club, um, where we're taking uh, two sessions tasting 12 or 24 in total different off flavors that you can get in beer so you can work out what that off flavor tastes to you so we're going to put it in a base boring beer and try and pick out what it is so that you can brew better beer so that's uh, happening this Sunday at Murphy's Law um, Irish pub in Patoni so really looking forward to that it's going to be refreshing for a change to have some bad beers Speaking of refreshing change, if you're sick of looking at bearded guys talk about beer, I've got some good news for you. Madison Smith is back on the YouTube channel again, and she posted a video up the other day um, all about what is beer, and what's it made out of, her little beer 101 course. So if you're um, wanting to have some nicer video to watch, Go and check out Madison's site. It's um, Wino Biro Fudo. But yeah, I'll put the link down the bottom. But yeah, go check it out. It's good to see her back in the um, in the brew tube domain again. I'm looking forward to seeing some of her reviews come through. Anyway, the peculiar ones have left. So um, the Vert One Two Six Seven, Dan ABA, and Hop House Brewing. If as soon as you receive those beers, if you can shoot me a PM or shoot me an email or something like that just to say that you've got it, it would be great because I didn't do a track and trace on them. I just sort of sent them on their merry ways and crossed my fingers. A track and trace costs an extra 10 bucks or something like that. Um, so I just shipped them as economically as I could, um, but well, well, well wrapped. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to hearing from you when you get those beers so that I know my babies have arrived safely. And um, also looking forward to seeing video reviews from all three of you on those beers, which would be great. Anyway, that's enough from me. Um, I'm going to leave you now with some footage from Beervana. Now please bear in mind that the footage gets a little bit wobblier as it gets towards the end, because I was drinking throughout the day. It's hard to hold a camera still. You don't concentrate as much as what you normally do. But anyway, I hope you enjoy the Beervana um, footage that I shot. Uh, it's not really focused on the beers it's more focused on some of the brewers and things that were going on and some of the outstanding things that were happening at Beervana the things that aren't normal the things that you pay good money to go and see which is what Beervana is all about that and drinking really good beers anyway well oh, run out Just enough of that joke for another glass. Cheers. Happy Obra Wednesday and have yourself another one. Thank you. This is Corey from the Brew House in Wellington and we're down here at Beervana and we just thought that we'd stop by and say hello to Corey. How you going Harry Brew 69? Thanks for the shout outs mate. Awesome. Is what happens when you come to a, an English beer stand and you tell them that their beer's too cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was ironic because I was actually putting it down before they were on 12 and I was like, oh, that needs way. Yeah, 12's a little bit warm. Yeah. Andrew Childs about his um, Celia Brown Ale at Beervana. Uh, it's a coffee brown ale. Um, really happy with how it's going. Everyone seems to be enjoying it. Um, I hope everyone gets the chance to. Uh, more beers coming out soon. Probably an IPA next. Um, I'm here today though working for Mangrove Jacks, uh, homebrew supply, um, my day job. 
and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's been getting some good response from people. Um, people keen to get into home brewing, and uh, you should too because home brewing is awesome. Cheers. And you, you've got the new. The we've got new, a, we've um, got, we're developing a mash tun boil kettle and heat exchanger, and what's this one now? That's this one now. Yeah, and that's going to be a, that's going to be available when? Uh, probably towards the end of the year or uh, beginning of next year. Um, we're just going to make sure it's completely perfect first, and it will be. I've been yeah. using it a lot, uh, and it's great. Awesome. We've got to get you serving us a jelly. Oh, uh, yeah, no worries. Oh, awesome. Yes. What's in the cream? It's a grapefruit foam. Oh, yeah. Should have Maker's Mark bourbon barrel for 12 months, blended with a fresh batch of the same beer, yep. and then One that we're heating up. What is it? It's blended is... Coxwain's Courage. Oh, the so Coxwain. Twelve Cox months. Maker's Mark Bourbon Age Imperial Porter. Yep. Blended back into fresh porter. So the ratio is about 60-40. So 40% barrel aged, and the barrel aged is the double barrel, which won the trophy for best beer be last night. So. Awesome. Weird and wonderful concoction. Well, this uh, Chris made this up for us. Oh, did he? Another wonderful contraption by Chris Banks. Look at this. Sweet, Sam. Chris, you do a wonderful job of brewing, of making brew equipment. Look at that. Here we go. Um, well, what we're doing now is trying to find where the demand in Sweden is or how much they're going to want, how that fits in with our production, yep. how much more we can actually make. Um, a big constraints getting enough hops. Yep. Um, we're working on how to expand more in Australia and Canada and the US. So what, what led you to Sweden? Um, I just guess it was through meeting um, a couple of Swedish people when I was judging at the World Bear Cup in Seattle back in 2006. Yep. And then one of them came and judged in New Zealand, took my beer back to Sweden. Um, they were working for a um, beer importer. We, we sent a container up there in 2010, so we kind of got into the system a bit. But then a tender came up last year, which was for um, Australian and New Zealand pale ales and IPAs under 7%. So basically they were looking for a beer from this part of the world that fell into that, that category. So then the government tasting panel gets to taste the, that range of beers and they pick one and then that beer gets a tender for a minimum of 30,000 litres. Oh, awesome, yeah. And well, we went, so initially we sent a 20 foot container. I thought that would last six months, it lasted three weeks. We sent a 40 foot container and that was supposed to last six months, that lasted three weeks. And then they went, oh, we better have two 40 foot containers and then they turned around and went, oh no, after that we'll make it six 40 foot containers over three months and we're just completing that at the moment and it's sort of just growing and growing. So we've gone from 30,000 litres, which was supposed to be 12 months, to yeah. our first six months has been 150,000. So those numbers are sort of getting big. So that's why I'm focused on Sweden. Um, we're also working through um, finding an importer in the UK. Yeah. Hi. 
90% of my footage is going to be all about garage projects. <laughs> I'll have a taste of Pete. What's that? Bring me a glass back. Well. I'll bring a glass. I'll bring a few back. Look at this. Look at what's going on in here. This is real Bevana. Holy hell. <laughs> That's what Bevana is all about. It's called butter beer. Butter beer. So we're not we're not just drinking beer here at Bevana, we're we're expanding our pellets and we're trying beer in different forms. Bevana is an opportunity where it's formerly a home brewer making small batches of beer and now with our fledgling brewery just upscaling from 100 liter batches where we can barely reach the public with those to get our beers in front of a very wide, large audience. Possibly 10,000 people this weekend are going to walk by our stand here. And that's a huge opportunity to get our beers in front of a lot of people in a short period of time. It builds our brand awareness and people will know about our beer. And that's what beer volume is for us. It's a big, wonderful opportunity. Silver was one for our Four Great Justice Toasted Wood Fired Coconut Porter. And uh, that's a beer that's thanks to Chris Banks and his partner Justina. After his, um, just what your thoughts of Bevana are yeah. after last year, after the winnings and, and where you've come from that. And it's going to sort of post it out to the US and the UK and just sort of try and get a little bit of awareness about the New Zealand brews that are coming out. Yeah. Have you got any aspirations to get beers out to the US and the UK? Um, so, yeah, I think if I was going to get any beers over there, probably something like Sauvignon Blanc maybe, you know. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea to use hops and water from the States, brew with them in New Zealand and then send that beer back over there. Like, yeah. there's just hundreds of awesome breweries yeah. making fucking good beer with those hops, so was, why add to it? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I agree, yeah. I mean, things are heading into a regional type arrangement anyways, yeah. you know. Um, like the George, they, they're brewing a couple hundred thousand litres and it's only yeah. in Hamilton. It's all getting drunk in Hamilton. Yeah, it's all happening in Hamilton, yeah. So, yeah. Same yeah. as Parrot Dog, you know, the Garage Project, um, Peru, it's all going to be basically focused in the regions yeah. because all the other regions are going to have their own brewery yeah. that they're going to stick to. It's going to be like how it was in the 1930s. So we're going to we're going to end up... So this is for the, all the people that, that listen in Auckland, there's going to be a brewery in Auckland that's going to give you good beer, okay? You don't have to fucking drink Heineken, fucking Stella or any shit like that, okay? When you go to a pub, you got to ask for Liberty. I want Liberty on tap and that's it. If the pub doesn't have Liberty on tap, move on to a different pub. It's easy. I like it. You're right. Okay. I'm here with Brayden, who won the Black IPA Challenge for New Zealand. Whoa! And he's working for the past four days. He's working for the next four days at Bevana. All I want to do is I want to say, Brayden, congratulations on winning the Black IPA Challenge. Cheers, thank you. And what does it mean to you? Oh, it's, uh, it's just fantastic. I mean, it's going to be my uh, first commercial beer um, release. So, no, I'm just, just really ecstatic, really, more than anything. Um, I just guess it's been a dream of mine for since I started brewing and yeah it's just finally come true that I'm actually going to get something commercially produced on a scale that I feel I can share with everyone in Wellington so yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Right? Raiden is working four days at Bevana just to drink beer okay he's, he's here in support of beer okay you can't get any better than that I win an award Oh shit, I've got the best black IPA ever. Oh fuck it, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna set up Bevana, I'm gonna man Bevana, I'm gonna look after everybody at Bevana, I'm gonna sleep on Monday, and then I will celebrate having a, a good black IPA. Always a pleasure.